In today's video, we have some NHL trade talk and some rumors revolving around some pretty substantial names, including guys like Anze Kopitar and Jack Eichel. Could the Red Wings' Bobby Ryan be an attractive piece to teams heading into the playoffs as we get later on towards the deadline? And we also have another update on the Penguins and Jim Rutherford situation. We'll discuss all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of things to talk about here today as well. Before we jump into the trade talk, I just want to mention as well that the, the yesterday's waivers, Madison Bowie has cleared, so he's fully able to join Chicago. They have assigned him to their American Hockey League affiliate. A uh, reminder, he was signed to a two-year deal and uh, needed waivers to be cleared before he could officially join the organization. Jumping into the news on the Penguins. Now, of course, we know the whole Rutherford situation. If you've been following the channel and you watch regularly, you know, we've discussed the situation a few times since he abruptly resigned. Um, we have a new report today through The Athletic from a Rob Rossi who is looking at uh, trying, to, trying to figure out what happened. But he is confirming, based on his sources, that there was indeed a bit of a disagreement on philosophy, that there was a trade in the works that Rutherford was working on that apparently ownership uh, kind of put the kibosh on and it kind of sent things in, you know, what you'd call having philosophical differences after. Now, the trade was apparently involving a defenseman to bring in. Obviously, we know they recently signed Yannick Weber. This was before he was signed. Uh, and essentially, they were bringing in somebody from the North Division, as all that's been revealed so far. Uh, it had nothing to do with Chris Letang. I know there's been a lot of talk that he was trying to trade the veteran blue liner, and ownership put a stop to it. Uh, from what we're seeing, there's more sources that are saying that's not true than the ones that are. So for now, we're going to assume that that's unlikely with the scenario. But it looks as though he was working on something that they didn't like. Now, of course, the, who could that have been? We'll probably never know 100%. We know there's a number of younger defensemen in the North Division in Canada uh, that very well could meet that criteria. We know that the Maple Leafs have considered moving Travis Dermott for a forward. We've talked about that Pittsburgh-Toronto connection before, so could have something to do with that. Uh, we know that Montreal would consider moving Victor Mete for the right price because he's having a hard time getting in the lineup, and they have more depth than they need on the blue line, so... Mete very well could be that guy. Uh, and I think maybe even a team like Winnipeg, who is obviously still shaking things up, maybe they'd look to move a guy like Sammy Niku. Uh, you know, I'm not sure and convinced that he would necessarily be one of those guys, but it's possible. I mean, he's an intriguing defenseman prospect that, uh, you know, has yet to really get into the NHL on a regular basis. And I know uh, Winnipeg at one point kind of saw him as having probably a little higher ceiling than they do now. So wouldn't be completely shocked if they did move him. I guess it would just depend on what the price would be coming back but i would think mate or dermot would be the more likely scenarios but hard to say what the return package was going to be or or whatnot but clearly ownership wasn't happy which is seems a little weird because clearly you know bringing in a defenseman like that is not really something you would view upon as really being all that bad so hard to say maybe they're not the names that he was looking at they're just the names that have been in the rumor mill lately that could find themselves being traded so uh, obviously whatever it was ownership didn't like uh, and like i mentioned before uh, my kind of two cents on it was that they likely you know didn't really necessarily part on bad terms per se but if they were having a difficult time agreeing on the direction maybe he just said you know what i'm 71 years old my contract's expiring here shortly uh, instead of fighting with them uh, and kind of butting heads, I'm just going to part ways and let them take it in whatever way they want. He had nothing but great things to say after he resigned, and maybe that's just the way it is, and we'll probably never know anymore. But it does look like he was working on something that wasn't in favor by ownership. We just don't know exactly what it was. But apparently, the Crystal Tang stuff that's been floating around uh, does not have any truth to it, at least from what we're being told from Rob Rossi. So it sounds like he's got good sources, so we'll have to go with that for the time being. Now, of course, as I mentioned, there's some other names making news here. Of course, some of these deals we're gonna talk about are things that are, you know, at least two out of the next three, probably scenarios that I think are a little less likely to happen, but certainly intriguing and worth considering a conversation around. Like, for example, there's reports on Los Angeles in their top center, Anze Kopitar. NHL Network on Sirius XM's analyst Jonathan Davis was talking about the Kings and uh, talking about the fact that he feels Anze Kopitar would make an excellent uh, trade bait for them obviously to shore up their blue line we know that Kopitar is having a, a great start to the season again uh, for the most part he's been a very productive guy he's had his down years here and there but for the most part been a really good soldier for them uh, you know he certainly comes with an expensive contract still has 
Three more years left at 10 million bucks a season, so that's not going to be easy to move in normal circumstances, let alone the climate we find ourselves in now. And he does have a modified no trade. The remaining three years, he has a, a seven-team list that he has to provide of teams that he would be willing to accept to go to. So that cuts out 24 other teams right now, uh, soon to be 25 when Seattle comes into play. So it would not be an easy thing to pull off. But ultimately, the rationale behind this is that the Kings are a team that's loaded with a very deep prospect pool, some of which we're starting to see make some strides this year uh, at the NHL level, which is great. And there's only going to be more coming here over the next year or two. They've got a lot of guys between what's already in the NHL that are young and getting their first taste of NHL hockey between the taxi squad and the American Hockey League uh, and what they already drafted and, you know, playing elsewhere as well. I mean, you go down that list, like it's pretty deep. It's pretty crazy. You know, besides a guy like Gabe Velarde, for example, is finally making some strides. You got Quentin Byfield, just went number two overall. You got Samuel Fadjamo. Uh, you know, you got Arthur Kaliev, you got uh, Alex Turcott. Like, the list is pretty deep. And at some point here in the near future, like, uh, some of these veteran guys are going to become more expendable. The only problem I have with this deal is that Kopitar is, is a guy that's a great mentor and a great leader for these young centermen. He's still being productive, so he's still, you know, relatively earning most of that paycheck. So, really, at the end of the day, trading him might not really make a lot of sense. But the rationale behind it was that of all the prospects they have, the forward group is likely going to get stronger way quicker because of all the, the young kids that are really deep in that area. But the blue line's not looking so strong. They do have a couple of you know prospects on the blue line that are, are looking pretty decent, but they could hopefully get a return of like a top-notch you know, uh, first pair blue line. For example, like a Matt Dumba in Minnesota. Like, you know, he's not... This is sort of the greatest defenseman in the world, but he's a terrifically gifted offensive defenseman. You know, not to say that he would be the guy, but that's just an example of a name that's been out there who has a you know possibility of being a top D and they want a top center in return. Like that kind of trade would be the only kind of deal that would probably make sense for both sides. And, and really though, like looking around the league, it's not easy to find. So could they consider moving him before his contract is up? I do think it's quite possible. Uh, now, though, just doesn't seem to be the time. I mean, his value would be decent given the fact that he's still being a productive player, but it's a lot of money, and unless the right deal comes along for a top defenseman, I just don't really see this scenario unfolding. So as much as uh, the suggestion from the analyst here thinks that he should make this move, I, I just don't see it, and I'm not sure that I'm in agreement. Now, another move that's been discussed here in a couple different media outlets as well is talking about Jack Eichel. Now, of course, for Sabres fans, please relax. We're not saying Jack Eichel is going to be traded, but there's a scenario that we could see unfold that we think that the, the likelihood would just jump right through the roof if indeed this plays out. We know that Jack Eichel is, uh, wants to win badly. He's expressed some frustration. Uh, this year has been okay so far. They're kind of struggling onto a playoff spot as of right now, but it's still really early. You know, with 45, 46 games to go, uh, it's really too early to tell. They're in a tough division. Uh, we've seen a scenario in the last game here where he was kind of complaining, wanting to stay out on the power play. Like, he, he wants to put his team on his shoulders and win, there's no doubt. But we've also seen a lot of people in the green that he really needs more help and things just are not really going overly well in that regard. Uh, Taylor Hall has been working out okay. But many feel that if Taylor Hall does not stay in Buffalo – that he is likely going to want to go because obviously a combination of things will have to happen. I think if Taylor Hall leaves and if they don't have a great season, so if we see the Sabres miss the playoffs yet again uh, and Taylor Hall leaves, we feel that there's a pretty good shot that that trade request that he is probably was close to making before is going to be more of an official thing happening. And if that comes to be, that the Rangers are going to be the team trying to swoop in to grab Jack Eichel because they are all over him last offseason. They are apparently pushing very hard trying to complete an Eichel trade. Buffalo would not really go too far with that. Um, clearly something they would have to consider for the right price. But given all the deep prospect pools that the Rangers have and these young players that they have on the roster and on the way right now, like the Rangers are a team that they could certainly give the Sabres a really nice setup going back. If, if all the of all the teams that they if they had to trade them, they would be one of the teams that could certainly have the best odds because of the package they can give. So again, not a scenario that I necessarily see unfolding as a sure thing. But if the playoffs don't happen for the Sabers and we continue to see frustration of Eichel, uh, you know that could be the tipping point where perhaps a trade could be. And if he does want that. 
the Rangers are a prime spot for him to go based on what we've seen before and what's likely going to happen here again. They clearly need that number uh, one, number two center that they're looking for, and he would be the perfect ideal candidate, and they clearly have had tons of interest. Now, the last player I want to talk about today is Bobby Ryan of the Detroit Red Wings. Got off to a hot start. It's cooled off a little bit since, but so far in seven games, he's got five points, including four goals. Uh, and according to the Athletics, James Myrtle, he feels that the Leafs are going to be looking to add uh, a veteran depth forward. He names off a few players here uh, in his, one of his latest articles, but Ryan's name was one of the most intriguing to me. Clearly, he's only on a short-term deal, one year, one million. A player they're very familiar with after all those years in Ottawa. They've seen him play up close and personal many times. Uh, you know, and he, he's having a good start. Kind of found his game again. And for somebody who could play, uh, you know, a smaller bottom six role for some extra added secondary scoring, it might be the guy they're looking for. I mean, there's a few other guys as well that were mentioned in this article, but like one of the other ones, for example, was like a Cedric Packett of the Ottawa Senators. Like, really, if you had your pick right now, you'd, you'd probably want Ryan over Packett any day of the week would be my guess. The way they're both playing, Packett hasn't had a good start with Ottawa, and Ryan's got off to a a great start uh, with the Detroit Red Wings. So he's certainly a player, whether it's Toronto or somebody else, uh, if he continues to play well on a short-term contract, rehabilitating his career here, I think he would be a terrific trade deadline pickup for most teams. And again, I'm going to say, like, I don't think that we're going to have a busy deadline. A lot of things I think will be done ahead of the deadline because of requirements of uh, quarantine, isolation, and all that. So Bobby Ryan very well could be of interest to the Maple Leafs uh, and others if he continues to play well here later into the season. So let me know your thoughts on all these players. I know like some of the ones we talked about today, a little less likely to happen, at least on a short-term basis. But, you know, these are what the reports are out there uh, in the media right now. And just want to get everybody's opinions to see what they think. So let me know your thoughts down below and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time.